and uh, we're now back. Sorry about that. We've um, we've run into a weird issue. We're not exactly sure what it is, but we experienced it a couple times, and then it seemed to be resolved. Where this level crashes Silverfish's computer, <laughs> even yeah. though I'm the one running it. <laughs> so. Um, that's a one. Of, that's the funny. issue. One of the issues we wanted to solve when we worked through for three hours earlier today on you know <laughs> getting the streaming to work properly, but apparently it didn't solve the issue, so we have to work some more on it sometime when when we have time for it. Um, but yeah, now we're back and let's continue with this level and hope it doesn't crash again. Right. So I'm gonna show off. Uh, one of the great things is this cityscape. Um, as you walk up through these hillsides, there's all these amazing looking architectural houses and buildings um i really like the way that they look the way that this feels you really get a sense of uh oh i think it's crashing again might be might be i see pink on the stream we should probably stop it right now um so it doesn't crash again maybe i'm going to i'm going to try and get over to the ship which is i think the other really cool part so, something in this city, see if it clears up. Yeah, it, it's looking good now. Okay. So, over here, I'm, we're, we're skipping away from the city because the city was too much to handle. So, this is a ship that he has built, and uh, it is awesome. <laughs> and, uh, again, we're down here on the, the rivers. He's using some of Aubrey's very cool textures. Um, and all the coloring to make things look and feel different, but this boat feels great. I'm going to run down the water here just to show you that there's no water, it's just ground. Yeah. But um, it's, it, what's really cool about this level, though, is uh, like compared to others, other levels, like you even compared it to Marcus's uh, old China level. Right. Which is an entire level made from custom assets, like must have been at least a hundred custom assets, even more, maybe. Yeah, maybe more. So, but this level is—it's awesome in in another way. It's awesome because it's uh, utilizing the assets that that are already there to make some pretty awesome architecture. Now we can't actually look r too close on this ar architecture because my streaming program might crash again. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, but we're... it's pretty amazing. Yeah, which, so I'll, I'll try and show it from a distance. We we might try to upload a video of uh, this map, perhaps uh, of you running around this map in the sure, future. Because I can do that. Um, let's talk about the packaging of the level a bit, perhaps. Uh, the level was very good packed, actually. I I enjoyed that he uh, did include the um, shadow textures, which is very useful, especially for a map that's this advanced. I mean, uh, I'm not sure that everyone could calculate the shadows for this level because it's just so... It has so many small pieces on it. Right. And either way, it saves a lot of time to just include the shadows, even if the download uh, download is increased in size. I guess he could include one version that doesn't have the shadows included if, uh, if someone just wants to calculate it on their own, doesn't want to download like 20 megabytes of uh, shadow files. It is like 20 megabytes, isn't it? Or is it 5, 10? I don't know. Um, I don't know. It it loaded pretty quick for me, so yeah, it's considerably larger. The download it's it gets like a thousand percent larger than if he just has the actual level file in there. Uh, but, right. But I but I really appreciated that, and uh, he also included a link to the sky file that you need, the sky texture file, and that's good. Correct. I, I think he could actually include the sky texture in the download. That would make it even easier, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's my fault. I asked that people try to just link to the sky texture since I'm already hosting them all on my um, server. So as opposed to having it be everyone has to download it every time. You only download it if you don't already have it. So you can go and download all of the sky textures from my OG mods site and then you don't have to download any more in the future. So that was my sort of my thought. Yeah, that, that's probably a good idea as well. Just grab them all, and then you have them all. Mm-hmm. Keep them somewhere safe. Exactly. 
Um, so yeah, it's very good packaged. So that's good. We're having some pinkness again. Get away from that bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want it to crash again, man. Uh, so silly. <laughs> it's very frustrating. Yeah. So yeah, really huge level, and uh, I don't know, did I say this? Maybe you could make a video of it? Um, yeah, I, I will try and make a video, because I think that this level is very cool and very much worth checking out. Yeah. So, And we can show that record video that. next week on Overgrowth Weekly instead. Sure. As well as upload it to the uh, YouTube channel, of course. Yes. Yes. So, um, is there anything else we should say about this level? Um... There are some issues uh, on the PC side, or maybe in general, causing it to actually crash people's games. So um, I definitely recommend trying it, uh, but don't be sad if it doesn't work. I just will make a, a king version sometime in the future because it's definitely worth it and, and totally awesome seeing some height map in the game. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. check it out. Yeah, a lot of people did have that issue where um, I did I did have it. That's why Anton has to stream it. And uh, I saw a few other people had it as well. It might be just a PC issue. So especially if you're on Mac, you should try it out. And if you're on PC, on, uh, you should try it out. And if it works for you or doesn't work for you, either if you're on Mac or PC, you should write it in the thread. Um, yes, to... which it's in the project show-off thread. Yes, and uh, that will help... Uh, help uh, last to figure out what the problem might be and uh, perhaps solve it and upload a work conversion right i really so, like that shot yeah it looks nice so that was I I need last's old monastery level that was released this week check it out so now back to my stream and next up we have corbane's characters so we've been following corbane for a few weeks now a few weeks he's been making a fox character and two otter characters that I don't think uh, he managed to get working actually. But um, he's still uh, doing these character thingies and uh, he kind of talks about... Uh, I, he, I think he fixed the fox up a bit. It had some issues with it with the texture and so on and uh, some uh, rigging issue but that should be solved now. And he has a new poll up for what he should do when his uh, when his raptor character is finished, because his next project, I guess, will be to finish the raptor character that was voted as the the top alternative uh, in the last poll. But now you uh, he wants to make a steed after that that he actually wants to make into a mod, so you will be able to mount an animal and ride around on it. I feel like that's a quite ambitious project, actually. Uh, I don't know what. Yeah. You, what do you think, <laughs> Anton, about that? <laughs> uh, I mean, it would be awesome. I would love to see a mod like that. Um, but uh, yeah, we only have one animation currently for multiple characters, and that's the the throw animation. So to see. Um, you know, to see a, something where you actually mount it and then have combined animations, it will be very interesting to see how you mods that together. Mm -hmm. my, yeah. my uh, fear with this is that he might be in over his head because, you know, programming can be very hard. I don't know how his, pro his programming skills are, though, so I might be totally wrong here, but... Uh, he talks a lot about reusing David's code, and I guess he can do that. But it's at the same time he needs to write a lot of new code, and that it can be it can be hard. That's all I'm saying. But I hope he can figure it out because, as you say, it would be very awesome if uh, he did get it to work. Definitely. And so in this poll, you can vote for Ostrich or Cassowary. Uh, you can vote for Giant Salamander, or you can write f vote for Riding Stag. And, uh, yeah, so those are your options. So go vote, if you haven't already, on what you think uh, the Noble Steed shall be. 
And Excellent. Uh, we'll be coming back to this, uh, looking at his raptor character that he's going to work on next. Of course, uh, revisit this in the future. So that's going to be sweet. So well done, Corbain, so far, and looking forward to more from you in the future. Definitely very cool stuff. Yeah. And that brings us out of the community segment and into the community side notes segment where there is only one item this week. I am worried I might miss some of these side notes, so if I do, please let me know in the uh, chat right now. But uh, learn underscore more has his weekly dump of... Uh, <laughs> his weekly dump, <laughs> yes. Of uh, scripts, so uh, if you're a scripter for Overgrowth, he uh, shows... Um, he, uh, this script dump will show you the differences from last week's uh, scripting, and you can also... He also includes a full... Um, a full uh, glossary, is that a word? Is, would that be a correct yeah. word? A full glossary of all the commands you can use, all the functions you can use when uh, scripting for overgrowth. And that's, of course, incredibly useful because um, before this, there was no way to know what any of the um, of the functions, functions you could use were. So this is very useful for all scripters. Thank you, learn underscore more for that. Definitely. And that was that for the community side note segment. And uh, <laughs> this brings us into the news segment where there is a lot of tweets showing some really, really cool stuff. But uh, first, we have the Art Asset Overview number 19 that was released just, um, yeah, on the 8th. That was just after, yeah, the day after last week's Overgrowth Weekly. So let's take a look at this and... Uh, We'll come back Welcome. afterwards with uh, some commenting, so... Excellent. Welcome to the Overgrowth Art Asset Overview. Last video I showed this concept of what the level select screen might look like. And to begin work on it I realized that I wanted a better grasp of these symbols for the map. So I started working on those. I had a few things that I wanted to try out. So I came up with all these different symbols and some notation for them. For example, this little line underneath means that it's for like a duration. So these are for day and night and this one might mean winter. Symbols can be used together so that they have a different meaning. So this means water snake and these other ones mean hawk. I also wanted to be able to reuse these symbols for character decoration. So I made these able to repeat and kind of go into each other so that they can form trim on clothing, like in this example. So here's the final map model with the symbols actually in use. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I was trying to go for a kind of stylistic look. Um, we've been playing around with some ideas in terms of separating the style for the user interface from the gameplay graphics and having them kind of represent different things. So it was important to try to nail this down as much as possible. I put some extra work into some of the smaller details here, like for example if you look closely you can see that the waves are animated. This uses a different alpha transparency texture and it just blends between the two of them. I use the same trick to get some animation on the clouds. When I have ideas for new types of assets it's convenient to be able to mock them up in my 3D modeling program and render them out just to make sure that the assets would work properly. So I did that a couple of times this week, once with the island here, and I also did a mock-up for the splash screen, which is what you would see when you start the game. So this is just a loose concept, but I think it's kind of cool, and it goes back to that idea of showing the two different styles kind of working together. That's it for this week's Art Asset Overview. Don't forget you can pre-order the game at wolfire.com slash pre-order. Thanks. So, 
this week's art asset overview. Um, let's talk about what happened in this video. Yes. So um, this video is basically all about the user interface for the game. And uh, he br brings up these symbols that he wants to use. So it's basically, he wants to make a language for Earth that the animals in the game will be using. At least a written language, yeah. Yeah, exactly, a, a written language. Um, um, and this language will be made out of sim different symbols. Uh, and here you have kind of a... You can see what the, the different symbols will will be meaning. Uh, this is just a an idea though, so this might not end up in the game, we'll see. Uh, but I kind of like this idea. Uh, because it allows you to... Uh, you know, to use kind of writing, uh, because these symbols kind of make sense. You know, this looks like water, this also looks like water, but two of them means a river. You can kind of imagine a river in the middle. And, you know, just having a a uh, something that actually, actually makes sense when you're writing stuff and not just gibberish, uh, if you want to convey something, it makes the world much more believable in many, in many ways. Yes, which would be very cool. It's... You know, every historic or every language has some historical time when they use pictographs, you know, and um, the only modern representation we still have of that that I know of is kanji, um, which is the Chinese and Japanese writing. But um, there is definitely some cool elements to that and, and you can get across an idea you know, sometimes if you if you understand the basics of the symbols, you can get an idea from about what something means without even knowing all the symbols, which is awesome. Mm, yeah, indeed. And I really like how he's kind of keeping a simple approach. It kind of makes sense. Um, he has. Uh, I actually studied this a bit. Uh, you, so as he said uh, later, you can combine these symbols to make to make, uh, you know, words, like uh, different animals. So if you combine this predator one with, uh, I don't know, this uh, person, it says person, I think, this one looks like a rabbit. I think it uh, signifies a rabbit because it has these two ears. So predator person might be a hunter, for instance, or predator bird, I think, as an, ex as an example, that might be an eagle or some other predator bird. Predator fish, predator fish might be a, um, what's those called? those little snappy ones i don't remember what well, you know sh I don't shark know. whatever whale man <laughs> oh, sure. whale man <laughs> that's the whale man oh yeah but then he also has these punctuations and he show, uh, shows off this uh, during punctuation so this is when something happens for a duration so uh, for example uh, rain with this symbol blow it this is the rain symbol would perhaps mean race rain season for instance um, mm -hmm. Maybe this symbol under a under the person symbol would mean a life or something like that. It's uh, yeah, it's just a very very versatile. Uh, it's creates a very versatile language basically. Yeah, it definitely has a lot of potential. Yeah, and, and very cool that way. Mm -hmm. I know it definitely definitely sparked my imagination at least. I can tell it that much. Yep. And I kind of feel like uh, he could uh, evolve it, make it even simpler, because I have read some Esperanto, for instance, and in that language you only have, like, one word for day, for instance. I don't know if that's the case, but let's say you have one word for day, and then you have another word. The word for night is opposite of day, so you don't need to learn day and the word night. You just need to learn the word day, and then you can say opposite of day, and that will be like night. Right. And that would simplify, bring down the number of symbols, make it easier for people to learn it if they want to, and easier to, you know, he does. He doesn't have to come up with as many symbols, and that might be a good idea. Right. Yeah. Which is cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, then he goes on to also talking about using how... them. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You can talk about this. Oh no! Well, I was just gonna say that he can that he started talking about using them for decorations, which I think is a a great idea. Um, it certainly allows you. You know, you could tell the story of how you your character evolved in these pictographs, or it it could be that. Um, 
you know, you know people's names based on the the pictographs that they're wearing, clans, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you can really sort of, you know, tell who someone is by identifying groupings of of symbols, and I think it's a great idea, and it looks cool too. Yeah, I agree. It's really a great idea. These symbols are so simple; they can be used almost anywhere. I mean, they can be used for. Uh, uh, as he writes, uh, or as he writes, he says he on the clothes, for instance, <laughs> in trimming. But they they could also be used, of course, in weapons, on buildings, on like um, uh, what's it called? How can I forget that? Like necklaces and rings and stuff like that. Jewelry, uh-huh. jewelry, exactly. Almost yeah, anywhere, very true. Uh, anywhere to convey like who someone is, li- like you said, personality and names, even like you also said. So. <laughs> Right. Right. Or loyalties, family names. I mean, yeah, so many things. But I mean, even even imagine like if someone had been a a warrior and you see them and they're wearing like a cloak and that cloak has like an intricate story detailed on the back of their cloak, you know, telling the, you know, or a tombstone or, you know, or a coffin. And it tells the story of you know, if it was a great general, how they led their troops into battle. And, you know, I mean, all kinds of very cool things that you can do with the pictograph system. Mm-hmm. And and, so. the, and the really, really cool thing about this, in my opinion, is that these uh, stories and uh, these symbols actually have a meaning. So I think that's very valuable, actually, to to the community and to make the game feel real. Because in the game you'll have these symbols and they'll actually mean something. You might not know it, but it'll add to add to the game to make it feel more real when uh, it has some kind of consistency to it, when it's not just kind of half random, just uh, like different symbols meaning the same thing and stuff like that. That doesn't uh, happen, or, or just uh, loosely using them. It's actually, they have a real meaning. And when the right. game has been released and the community starts... Uh, making more of their own stuff and maybe making their own stories and their own levels and stuff it'll be even more important for the hardcore community members uh, to to be able to actually read what is written in a level in the you know in the real written language that is used in uh, in the universe yes yeah because I know, like, if someone released a mod, a map, after the uh, game is released and he has some kind of writing like this on his level, I would be very, very interested in reading what he has written there. Just because I can, basically. Right. It's like learning like learning Klingon or learning... <laughs> yeah, exactly, I can imagine. There was that... Oh, what was... Stargate had their own language and Atlant... You know, yeah, anyway... Yeah. Really, really cool stuff in any case, especially for hardcore, hardcore uh, fans of the series. Yeah, someone just mentioned the Lord of the Rings languages, and you know that the uh, Tolkien was a uh, el. Well, I mean, but there were it was not just Elvish. He he invented different languages for each of the different races, and they were all um, true languages because he was a linguist and had studied them and and that is something very cool but very time consuming and requires more than what probably what a game like this would do on their own Mm -hmm. so yeah very very cool very much and then it goes on to show uh, showing this map, this 3D map that um, this is a mock-up of how the level selection screen might look so here you have kind of the different areas, I guess, are uh, named by by these symbols. Uh, I, here you have, for example, I think this is the symbol for rain right there, and beneath here you have the symbol for forest, so this would be called like the rainforest. Here you have the symbol for water over the forest symbol, so that would be like the water forest. Here you have snake, and what's this? It's like, oh, a desert. This is the symbol for desert. So snake desert, this would be, you know, um, cool stuff. I um, I kind of like this. I like how it looks. I like the kind of, uh, I, I just like the look in general of, of this uh, model, actually. Yeah, uh, I like it a lot, too. And I, I like the animations. Um, when I first saw it, though, and, I, and you look at how many 
levels are shown there um it makes me a little nervous about <laughs> maybe not maybe nervous isn't the right term but um you know uh you i guess you start to really get an idea of just how small the island is and that all of these things are going to take they're going to be closer together i i sort of imagined a fairly vast island where i mean if you have a desert that takes a long time to cross and having a mountain takes a long time to cross and it seems a little bit smaller than i was expecting i guess that's kind of what i was getting at but yeah that that might actually be true but you have to keep in mind also that this is as you said it's it's an island uh, we don't really know how large the island is we don't know the distances this might be the size of i don't know um uh, what's a big continent? <laughs> I, I don't. Well, I, I suck at geography, so give me a big continent. A big continent. I mean, the biggest, of course, would be Europe and Asia, Africa, yeah, North America, I mean, South America. The one where Africa? Yes, I think Africa. This could be perhaps the size of Africa. We don't know. I think it's probably smaller. I, I my guess, to, to for it to be considered an island, it would have to be smaller than Australia. Would be my. Mm, would okay. my yeah and uh, australia is huge it's still considered a continent but um <laughs> yeah they're saying greenland maybe the size of greenland although it always looks larger on maps than um it does on globes so yeah. you have to be careful with greenland <laughs> yeah it's can't, it's true because it. of how well, <laughs> to to project a, a three dimensional image on a two dimensional plane causes distortions, and we get most of those distortions near the north and northern and southern poles. And so Greenland actually looks much larger on a map based on what type of projection you're using. And this is really boring stuff. So <laughs> uh, I'm gonna let it keep going. They're saying Madagascar now. Maybe if I maybe if I just keep dis discrediting every island that they'll just keep naming islands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, yeah. I don't know how large this is, but uh, really, if if you think about it, since they don't have like vehicles or anything like that, it's uh, either way almost any size is going to be pre pretty big. But uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess I'm I'm just hoping that. You know, I mean, if, if if we see five levels there... See, I mean, I was sort of thinking, like, if that there's five levels in that section, and then there's five levels in each other section, you know, that's uh, t one, two, three, four, six. That's 30 levels. It's more than I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, man, it feels like it's going to be a short game. But 30 levels is still respectable. So yeah. um, I take it back. It's not, it's not as small as I feel like it is, but... Um, you know, I, I want the game to last forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. I kind of feel also like I want the the world to be larger than this island. Uh, l just looking at looking at it right now. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens in the future. And uh, well, and the world certainly can be larger. I mean, you know, there's no reason it has to remain on the the island of Lugaru. Yeah. So. Also, another thing uh, I was going to say is that you could perhaps like go back to a level and uh, replay it. Like maybe the story brings it back to the same location several times. Is what I'm trying to say. Which, which certainly happened in the original Lugaru. Yeah. I mean that was. Yeah, definitely happens. So. So anyway, that's the mock-up of the world map. Something we might see, something similar to in the final game. Uh, looking good so far, though. Yeah, it, it it is. I mean, the look of it, I think, is amazing. I think what makes it look small is that there's basically one large mountain and one plains desert area, and they're kind of the same size. Yeah. So. True, true. And uh, he kind of shows off these animated waves he has uh, made, and I like them. I didn't really notice the animation, but... Um, that, of course, since the whole model is moving, it's kind of hard to notice small movement like that. And he also has these cloud uh, clouds animating here, as you can see. Right. I really like that effect. It's kind of a zen animation, if you know what I mean. It's something 
you really don't notice right away. It doesn't steal your attention in any way, but it's there and it kind of makes the uh, the model feel much more alive. Right. No, and I I love the animations. Like the whole the whole style of it is very cool. I mean, I'm I'm very excited to get into a game that looks like that. Mm -hmm. So same here, same here. Yep. And so then, and then uh, lastly, he shows a uh, mock-up of uh, how a splash screen might look for Overgrowth, and he kind of melds this uh, uh, these two ideas uh, that he has. He wants to. He's talking about distinguishing the gameplay graphics from the user interface graphics. So you have the gameplay graphics in the text here, as you can see. And then you have uh, like a drawn version of the same map, but darker, uh, kind of in the background. It's kind mm -hmm. of filtering through the uh, text. Uh, I'm not sure how well this would work as a splash screen. I kind of like the idea, actually. But uh, this I'll image itself, it's not very impressive. Well, it's a, it's a little hard to read. I think it it doesn't. Um, but it, but the you know the concept is what is very cool with this. So, um, I like that part of it a lot. Yeah, I agree. And uh, that's actually the end of the video. So very cool, very very cool art to review this week. It made me just these symbols. This symbol thing he has been doing um, made me think a lot and made me very excited for the game. So, exactly. So well done as usual by Aubrey, and uh, hopefully we will see more uh, very soon. Perhaps one this week as well, or next week. I guess it would be right. Yeah, next week. Well, actually, yep, we'll if you're in America, Sundays are the first day of the week, right? Uh they are. Although I um. I, I have them as the last day of the week, so like on all my calendars, they all start on Monday. So yeah, same here. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's like that in the rest of the world, actually. So that's cool, actually. Um, next we have uh, editing sound effects video. So this is a video made uh, by uh, Tapio, the guy who's making the sound effects for Overgrowth, and it uh, shows uh, the process that he goes through to actually put together the sound uh, when he has recorded the uh, when he has recorded the uh, sounds for the game so that he wants to use for the sound effects yes and um i think it's a cool video um although to me it looks like my every day of work <laughs> since i work <laughs> in in that particular piece of software quite often so mm. um yeah but i but i like it i think the the video is cool you know it's it's one of those things where sound uh is is um sound is hard to explain to people i think and so um watching it you may not necessarily understand what's going on uh you kind of have to listen and it's time consuming and can be difficult so we'll mm. see you know i i you know i don't know how how do you feel about this this video well i find i find uh, his videos interesting just as i find uh, almost any overgrowth thing interesting i have to say i didn't watch the whole video because he goes through this whole editing process and not a lot of stuff is going on but I did like skip through it, watch uh, small uh, parts to see it kind of more quickly progress, and uh, yeah, I think it's interesting. Uh, it's uh, interesting stuff, and uh, I agree with what you said that it's hard to explain sound effects or explain you know how sound sounds, and uh, it's always nice to see how how the actual process is. Right, and in this case, I mean, in this particular case, he's. Um he he's actually layering a lot of sounds together to kind of create a visual moment whereas those layers wouldn't necessarily all play at the same time in in a real scenario you know he has blood dripping at the same time as being hit in the head and the same time as you know all these other things so you wouldn't necessarily get that all at once unless you manage to get that exact same scenario in the game uh but so, you know 
Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, so these sounds uh, are actually... He's not making one sound effect here. He's kind of putting all the sounds together uh, in a way that makes sense. And then he's going to kind of split them up into several different sound effects. That certainly seems to be the case with what I'm seeing. Because you see the blood squirting and you see... You know, he's he's syncing it up to the video, which is really nice. Um, but uh, these are all objects that would often have other other things happening at the same time. You know what? I, if that makes sense. So so like, just because you get hit, you're not gonna gush blood. And you know. Yeah. Um. So so he's using it as a reference, but I'm a. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think that you would necessarily trigger all of those sounds at the same time every time. But knowing that they work together is important, and knowing how one flows from one into another is also important. Yeah, indeed. Um, so that's that video. It's very very interesting, especially if you're interested in sound, and uh, it's also just interesting to to watch it anyways if you're into this kind of stuff. So do that, and. Uh, if, do you understand this this thing at the end when he uh, so Aubrey writes when I asked Tapia if he wanted to say anything for the post he said yes not guilty. What does that mean? <laughs> um. Uh. Well, I I'm I'm guessing he's making a joke that he's uh like when the jury asks you how do you plead you would say not guilty. So he's saying it's not his fault. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get it, man. I, I thought it was my limited vocabulary that didn't didn't make that work. But anyways, maybe just it's just a weird joke. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. I think it's just a joke. <laughs> yeah, cool video, anyways. So check it out if you're interested. Next, we have a bunch of cool tweets about overgrowth. So first, we have escape throw. That I named it. Uh, uh, adding an escape for the throw if you press grab fast enough. So this is uh, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier in the show, where if you attack someone and then he blocks the attack, he can throw you and get guaranteed damage. But now you can escape the throw if you press your grab button uh, quickly enough after he's done his grab on you. So it's like a counter counter attack. I always called it a counter counter attack, but I think it's called a reversal or something like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not quite I'm not quite sure about the terms, but something like that in Luguri, anyways. So that's yeah, good. I mean a, a reversal. It's a reversal of the throw. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So so that's good. That's going to level the uh, the fighting again, make the fighting more interesting, uh, even more interesting. Even even though it's more interesting this week than it's been previously. Uh, this is going to make it even more playable when you when you can actually be good enough to not get hurt if 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 you're that good. Right. Next we have faster block attacks. Mm, so you can now throw or attack instantly after active blocking instead of a few frames later, which makes it much more useful. There's not really a whole lot to say about that except that yeah good uh, because it makes sense that if you block you should uh, in most games when you block something uh, your reward is that your opponent gets stunned for instance or something like that right um so it doesn't it kind of makes sense that at least you should be able to attack quite quickly to kind of surprise your opponent after a block even though he doesn't get stunned because that would be kind of lame in a game like this right well every good attack sh i mean every good defense should also be an attack yeah exactly <laughs> exactly man and then we have feints another tweet holding grab while attacking now turns attacks into feints this isn't useful yet except to balance the throw escape so you can't spam it so this is kind of cool like if you hold the right uh, right mouse button while clicking the attack button he'll kind of do a half attack not really doing any damage he'll just pretend to attack him uh, he says right. this, this is difficult to ex expert to balance the throw escape, so you can't spam it. I don't quite get that because to escape the throw, you just click right click, right. Right, but he's saying he's saying that if you get the timing wrong, you can't keep just trying. Like you can't get out of like if you've missed your opportunity, 
and you try and 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 you're being thrown you're not going to be able to get out of it then i think which doesn't quite make sense but that's what it sounds like he's saying Hmm. yeah yeah it doesn't make sense to me even though you explained it to me so (laughs) yeah (laughs) but feints are cool i mean if if you can if you can trick trick a, a character into thinking that you're going to attack and then and then they block and then you really attack that will be pretty awesome yeah, it'll be great. I think it could potentially be great for gameplay and it'll look great as well because not many games have feints, but I think real life has quite a few feints. I know from fencing, I've been fencing earlier. I don't don't do that still, but when I was fencing, you know, a feint was a very big part of fencing because you wanted your opponent to kind of block in one direction and then you would quickly pull back and then uh, attack, you know, over the block kind of and stuff like that. So this will make the battles look much more real when when stuff like that happens. Yes, I agree. And that was that, so that's cool. Uh, next we have block while recovering. So now you can basically... Yeah, active block now works while recovering from hits, so you can use it to break combos. Yeah, good stuff. It's now, a, go, go ahead. I was going to say, that will be really nice if you're being ganged up on, because that's often a time when you're like, I just want to block, and... And you can't, so... Yeah. Um, I think it's really good because uh, because otherwise it's very easy to get overrun by several enemies. Because even if there are several enemies, I think you should be able to block all attacks if you are that good. The problem when yes. you have several enemies at the same time, though, is that you had, you, you'll have no chance to actually do a like a throw or an attack of your own because they'll just hit you. And if you're attacking or making a throw while getting attacked, you'll ragdoll. And if you're ragdolling, they can kick you. And if you're getting kicked, you'll you'll probably die. And uh, that's basically the the train of thought I have uh, concerning that. But if you are good enough to block attacks from like two or three guys, then you should be able to, I think. I think so too. And then we have NPCs picking up weapons. And this Woo-hoo! is a pretty good thing, yeah. Woohoo! Enemies can pick up and <laughs> use weapons now, but the weapon combat is still in early stages. Yep. So be afraid if you, <laughs> if your character if you drop a weapon. Um it it can definitely be a scary thing. Mm-hmm. Especially the way it currently is, where some weapons just kill you instantly. <laughs> yep. Yep. This this may be a pretty unbalanced week of of overgrowth. Yeah. Just don't just don't add an uh, just don't add a weapon to your level, okay? And uh, <laughs> it'll be fine. Uh, but this kind of um, ties into the next one where he uh, talks about uh, testing out a dodge mechanic to defend against weapons while unarmed. So you will be able to block those deadly attacks, or not block them, you can uh, you can dodge them. Hopefully. He's testing it out, so he might not actually put it in the game if it doesn't work out, but it feels like a thing that should be in the game, in my opinion. Right, and we definitely had that in Lugaru. Yeah. And uh, it was definitely a huge part of defending yourself against, um, yeah. Yeah, against uh, weapons. Right. Like, weapons often have a range, so if uh, if you're too far away from actually doing something to your opponent, but you're close enough to get attacked by the weapon, you can't really do anything to the weapon if the weapon is, like, something sharp. You can't grab something sharp because you'll, you're, you'll cut yourself, basically. And uh, so your only way out is to just uh, dodge the attack. So that was kind of what happened in Lugari, was that I was trying to get close, and then I would dodge away when he attacked me, and then I was trying to get close, I would dodge. And then when I finally got close enough, I could reverse his attack and get his weapon out of his hands and use it against him instead. Exactly. And that's kind of how I imagine it will be in Orgoth as well. I think so. So that should be cool. Cool stuff. He's adding a lot of stuff to like combat and AI now, so this game is going to get much more interesting in, in uh, hopefully coming weeks as well, not just this uh, coming alpha in two days. Right. Um, and then we have some. That's all of the. That's all of the tweets regarding overgrowth. And then we have one more tweet. Tweet uh, just saying that humble bundle three is now closed. So if you didn't get the humble Bu- in the bundle three, you are now out of luck, unfortunately. 
Yeah, I get the feeling that that's not our audience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, but yeah, so this humble uh, indie bundle, if I uh, understand things correctly, it went very well. We haven't gotten uh, any like any retrospect on it yet. I think it's called. Right, post mortem. Yeah, post mortem. Yeah, that's that's what I'm uh, looking for. But hopefully they will be posting that uh, quite soon, I can imagine. And uh, But if I understand things correctly, it went uh, very well, this bundle. Uh, yeah, over $2 million that raised this time, so uh, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Linux users were the champs once again, donating more than anybody else. Yeah, which shows, which shows that, you know support linux and uh, money will be coming your way <laughs> but, yeah. support linux games yeah yeah support linux games yeah i mean for two game developers support linux and money will be coming your way exactly yeah, so yeah humble in about three closed it went well we will uh, hopefully see a post post-mortem quite soon uh, next we have post show game poll results and this is the last item on the agenda for this week so last week I told you guys to vote on the games that you wanted to uh, to see played in uh, Overgrowth Weekly uh, post show. And Steelstorm Burning Retribution was the game that won. The poll was closed like 20 minutes before the show. Uh, 36, it's actually 25 minutes before the show. Uh, and yeah, as I said, Steelstorm Burning Retribution, the winning game. Atom, Atom Zombie Smasher, turned out it didn't even have online co-op in the first place, so... It receiving zero votes was very adequate because I would not have <laughs> wanted that vote. Like, it's seven and eight between Left 4 Dead and Steelstorm. So if one guy would have voted on this, he would have been the you know uh, master of deciding. His vote could have been on Left 4 Dead or Steelstorm, and that would have kind of messed things up. So I'm very happy no one voted on that one. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Although I must say the game is awesome. I I really like that game a lot. I find it very addictive. So, yeah. um, <laughs> even though, even though, unless I'm playing with uh, with some of the alternate modes turned on, I almost always lose. The the zombies are quite menacing in that game. So, either that or I just suck at it. But it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So um, so check it out. Anyways, I think it has um, hot seat co-op, so you can c play cooperatively on one computer. I think the other people use gamepads or something like that. So try that out, should be should be cool. But the winning game is still some burning retribution, so that is the game that we will be playing in uh, the post show this week. So if you don't have the game already, and if you don't have the game downloaded already, download it and um, and play with us. But that is the end of Overgrowth Weekly 35. We're already at number 35, man. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it is pretty <laughs> crazy. So as usual, go to ogweekly.com for the agenda and for the countdown to the next uh, next show. But uh, until the next show, um, yeah, have a good time. See ya. See you guys. <laughs>